Britney Spears, former member of the Mickey Mouse Club. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Michael Jackson. Let's start off with talking about some of the bacteria that can cause otitis media. Like Staphylococcus aureus, it's a gram-positive coccus, and it's found in clusters that coagulate and it's catalase positive. Well, viruses also could cause it. We got the rhinovirus, which is a non-enveloped polyhedral or capsid with a single-stranded RNA, and it's cause of the common cold in 34% of children. How about the hemophilus influenza? It's gram-negative bacillus that can produce an antiphagocytic capsule, so you can all be all like, eat me, and it'll be like, no way. Well, respiratory selectol virus is much better. It's enveloped with helical capsid, single-stranded RNA with negative sense of polarity, and it causes the infectious lungs and respiratory tract. Then there's always the streptococcus pneumoniae. It's gram-positive, catalase-negative, and it's the most common worldwide, so you can be totally trending. You're right. A you know, virus is much, much better. We got non-enveloped polyhedral capsid with double-stranded DNA. And then there's my personal favorite, the Streptococcus pyogenes. It's gram-positive, arranges in pairs, and produces a toxin. So you could be totally toxic, you're slipping under. Well, I also got a favorite. I got an influenza virus. Enveloped helical capsule with single-stranded RNA. It causes pneumonia, and it accounts for 3 million deaths a year. Both viruses and bacteria that cause otitis media can be found in a variety of environments. Like in child daycare centers, I never let my kids go there. Not to mention, your eustachian tubes can host all the pathogens that cause your respiratory infections. They thread and flow droplets and respiratory secretions can be passed through toys or coughing. Fluid droplets enter the nose or throat and travel the eustachian tubes to the middle ear. Children have shorter ones than old people, so the pathogens are more likely to get there. Pathogens attach tissues in the pharynx and nasal cavity. And then the epithelium is protected from antibodies in the immune system cells, which is why infections are restricted to the area. Swelling blocks the ear canal. This goes to fluid buildup, causing pressure and pain. Hi guys, I'm Jamie Lynn Spears. Even though my sister wasn't the best mom ever, and I'm only 16, I still want to know what to look for in otitis media. Pain and pressure are the most recognizable symptoms. Beaver, lethargy, cough, drainage from the ears, or balance in hearing problems are often common. In children, fussiness, crying, trouble sleeping, or tugging on the ears are also good signs. When infection occurs, the tympanic membrane exhibits retraction, which is called aurea and it's bright red and has fluid behind it. It's often accompanied with high body temperature and a high heart rate. Yeah, but Jamie, it's not all that like weird if your kid gets it because, I mean, 75% of kids get it before they're a year old. And so it's like the first thing doctors look for. Well, my doctor will begin by deciding if my child has had a cold recently that might have been due to a pathogen that can cause otitis media. And then he can use an oscope to look at the eardrum. And if it's right, red and bulging, then an infection is present. What should I do if my child does have botanismia? Oh wait, let me ask a real doctor. One of the most common treatments for a middle ear infection is amoxicillin, which is a 10-day therapy two times a day. Uh, this is a semi-synthetic penicillin that blocks the formations of invading bacteria and is only effective against gram-positive bacteria. If you add clavulinate to that, um, also take that two times a day. And this drug will inhibit the production of penicillase from bacteria, which is used for recurring cases of middle ear infection or if other antibiotics have been taken recently. Now if you look over here, there's another option named azithromycin. Uh, this is usually a single one-day dose, so that you only have to fight with your child to take the medication once. This antibiotic has microlides that block the bacteria's protein synthesis. Uh, it's effective for both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Now for chronic cases, doctors can perform surgery and uh, insert a tympanostomy, and uh, this will ventilate the tubes in the ear. For a virus, no drug can cure the host, and for pain, regular doses of Tylenol and ibuprofen can be administered. Now Dr. Anderson, are there any ways to prevent otitis media? Well, Otitis media can occur as a secondary infection from the influenza, so an influenza vaccine can actually help prevent an ear infection. Also, if you have your child wash their hands frequently and stop the spread of pathogens, and avoid smoking as secondhand smoke has been linked to otitis media. 
Uh, this is important. Don't put your child to bed with a bottle because fluids tend to pour to the back of the throat, which can be a catalyst for infection. Breastfeeding is better than bottle feeding uh, as an infant because this can help uh, stimulate the immune system of the child, and which can help it, protect it from an inner ear infection. And the most important one is probably to avoid contact with sick children. Can you explain that one a bit more? Let me put it to you like this. Here we have a toddler. You know it's a toddler because they have a sucker. He's sad because he has otitis media. Now he is sharing his sucker with this baby. He's happy until he takes a lick of the lollipop and contracts the disease and so on and so forth. Now Dr. Anderson, why should I believe you? You just have to believe me. Trust me. I'm a doctor. Now, here's a story all about how my life got twisted upside down. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, tell you how my kid got sick, and it's all from child care. I was picking Billy up, he was crying a lot. I put my hand on his head, and he felt pretty hot. Before I looked him over and gave him an inspection, I remember he just got over a respiratory infection. I figured that's why he was feeling so sick until I saw his ear drainage turn the car around quick. The doctor did one gram stain and sounded like a big shot when he said it's a tightest media that little Billy has got. The doctor said Billy was sick because of smoke and I didn't breastfeed, which all could invoke the bacteria that the disease transmit and that 75% of three-year-olds got it. I rolled up to the pharmacy and gave her the slip, and she handed me some amoxicillin tablets. I look at the little Billy, so unaware that a Titus Media could be found at childcare.